Good morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church uh, on this last day of July. Uh, thankful to be able to be here with you, uh, those who are here in person and also those who are viewing us online. Uh, thankful to get the chance to gather around God's Word together. So as we do that this morning, we are continuing our series called Focused, uh, as we focus on different parts of our Christian life. And today we're thinking about our, our earthly material possessions, um, which are good things, by the way. They're blessings from God. They're wonderful blessings. Uh, but today we're, we're thinking about, do we ever focus on those things too much? And what's the proper balance uh, of focusing on those things in our lives? So our, our theme for today is focused living properly values earthly, earthly wealth, all right? Again, it's not that this earthly stuff is bad. It's wonderful. Uh, but how do we value it in the proper way? So we're going to focus on that this morning. So with that in mind, uh, we'll begin then with our opening hymn. Please stand. For our order of service today, we'll be using uh, the service setting three. It's on page 188 in the front of the blue hymnal. Uh, it's also in your worship folders and on the screen behind me. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. 
I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, grant us wisdom to recognize the treasures you have stored up for us in heaven, that we may never despair, but always rejoice and be thankful for the riches of your grace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our God speaks to us in his word this morning uh, from the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, uh, portions there of chapters 1 and 2, and we're looking really at the part of this book that's probably the most famous part, where the author, who we think might be King Solomon, says, meaningless, everything is meaningless, and it sounds kind of strange, you know, to hear from the Bible, uh, but it's the reminder that out, apart from God and his blessings to us, Everything else in this world is meaningless if we remove God from it. 
The point is to, to put God back into it. Remember that he is the one who gives these blessings. And then, as it says near the end of this text, that to enjoy these blessings and give thanks to God is a great thing. Uh, so we hear these words then from Ecclesiastes chapters 1 and 2. The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. I, the teacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. I applied my mind to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under the heavens. What a heavy burden God has laid on mankind. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. I hated all the things I had toiled for under the sun, because I must leave them to the one who comes after me. And who knows whether that person will be wise or foolish. Yet they will have control over all the fruit of my toil, for which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. So my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. For a person may labor with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and then they must leave all they own to another who has not toiled for it. This too is meaningless and a great misfortune. What do people get for all the toil and anxious striving with which they labor under the sun? All their days their work is grief and pain. Even at night their minds do not rest. This too is meaningless. A person can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in their own toil. This too, I see, is from the hand of God. For without him, who can eat or find enjoyment? To the person who pleases him, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. This too is meaningless, chasing after the wind. The word of the Lord. Uh, we'll sing our psalm of the day, which is a, a version of Psalm 90, as you find it in your worship folder. Our God also speaks to us in his, in his word from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3. And here we're reminded again not to set our minds and hearts on earthly things, on stuff from this world, but instead focus on the blessings God has given us, the things above, like it says here. And it also reminds us to 
not continue in the sinful ways of our sinful nature. So we read here from Colossians 3. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself, yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. The word of the Lord. And I invite you to please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel for today is from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 12, and this will also serve as the basis for the sermon this morning. Someone in the crowd said to him, said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then you will get what you have prepared for yourself. This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, we'll continue with our next hymn. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, it's one of those things that you sort of, you always know in the back of your mind it's possible, but you really pray it never happens to you because it's just one of those terrible things. And I'm thinking of a house fire. You know, it's uh, scary to even look at the picture. I think this is from a, one of those uh, drills that they let firefighters do, you know, once in a while when there's a condemned house. But even just seeing it, it's just, it's hard to look at because it, it's so scary. And I know a couple people that, that have had this happen. And, you know, it's, a, it's an awful loss. But I think it's worth us to think about, uh, not to scare us of fires or anything like that, but to think about, you know, what it's like or what it would mean to have basically all your earthly possessions go up in smoke. You know, and what would you do and and what would that mean for you? So, I mean, almost as a thought experiment, you know, think about it if, you know, let's say that there was a house fire uh, where you lived. Everyone gets out, right? You know, we won't put any of that in the the equation here. Everyone is safe. All people, all pets, you know, they're, they're, they're fine. They're out of it. But But if that was happening and you had a chance to maybe go in and grab one, maybe two things before a fire takes it all away, what do you go grab? You know, is there a couple of photo albums that you want to make sure you hang on to? Uh, Is there some sort of collectible, you know, that's uh, something that you know was a lot of money and, well, I don't want that to, I have to save it. That's not exactly something that the insurance is just going to replace. Some other thing from either from maybe a grandparent or, or from a young child, something that just seems like you couldn't replace it. You know, what would you take? It's one of those things that we hope never happens. But it, it gets us thinking about our relationship with our earthly possessions, which, as I've already mentioned today, earthly possessions are a blessing. The point of our service today isn't to say, that you should all do this, that you should all hope your stuff goes away. Although there's a part of us that maybe can understand that if you've ever had to move, right? You start to realize, man, we have accumulated stuff. This is, this is crazy. Or if you've ever had someone you love die and now you are the one in charge of the estate and figuring out where everything goes, you know, that can be hard. And we can think about, you know, not that we ever want a fire, but man, it, it would all just disappear. It might... To some of us, it might, might almost sound nice, but think about those things and, and the hold they can have on us. And what we're going to be thinking about today is how, because of our sinful nature, we're all sort of built constantly looking for more. Right now, in and of itself, looking for more isn't a bad thing, right? If, if, if you need a car and you're looking for another car, oh, okay, that's not necessarily wrong, right? But it's that constant desire for more, that Sort of that idea of, you know, you're never content, but you're always looking for just one more thing. And maybe with the idea that that'll finally fill that hole in my heart, whatever it is, whatever sadness I feel, whatever longing I feel, oh, just getting that one more thing will satisfy it. Only we know it doesn't work that way. Only God can, can satisfy our heart and give us the more that we really need. So we're going to think about that today and think about where that looking for earthly things more and more really gets us, and how we can concentrate on the more that our Savior has promised to provide for us. Now, as we think about this, we're, we're looking in Luke's gospel, and it was sort of surprising to me to look, you know, uh, earlier in this chapter, we're looking at Luke 12, but to look at the beginning of this chapter and to see what a huge crowd Jesus was speaking to. Because I don't know why, I, I, I usually sort of picture... You know, not, not a small group, but even when Jesus is speaking to a crowd, I think, well, this is a crowd in the ancient world, and it's not, you know, not like we have today. But at the beginning of Luke 12, uh, it says this, Meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousands had gathered, so that they were trampling on one another. So this is, this is a huge group uh, gathering to see Jesus. Uh, many thousands. Uh, this is Jesus at, kind of at the height of his popularity, when everyone is just hanging on his every word and wanting him to... You know, the miracles he would do, the teaching he would do, he is very popular at this point. And it's interesting, we, you know, maybe we sort of think, well, you know, this is Jesus, the Son of God, maybe he's sort of delivering some prepared remarks and then, you know, saying goodbye, but 
uh, it, it seems like they were kind of interactive sometimes, these sessions of teaching that Jesus would do. And so that we see once in a while a, a question coming from the crowd, and then Jesus uses that question to kind of teach. And it's kind of an interesting one that gets asked in our text. It, it would be funny if it wasn't so sad kind of thing with this question. So we hear that someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. I said it, it could almost be funny. You almost picture, you know, little kids, you know, like, mom, tell my brother to share this with me, right? Which, okay, that's kind of cute to think of. But then you realize this is probably a grown person. Uh, this is very public situation. Remember, many thousands of people there, and somehow this guy's voice gets heard airing what, again, sounds like a kind of a petty argument between this person and his brother. And again, it, it's kind of sad. We don't know the details. You know, was the person talking, was he right? Was the brother, you know, stealing from him? Maybe. Uh, was he not right? We don't know. Uh, but again, it's kind of sad to think about someone bringing these, you know, these family problems into this public sphere, maybe hoping, well, as Jesus says, he's got to share it with me. Maybe he'll do it. I don't know. Um, but Jesus doesn't really bite uh, with that. Uh, he says, Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Right? So even back then, there were, you know, there were legal ways to figure out who is supposed to have the inheritance. You know, there's, there's a right way to do that, and if there's a dispute, there's probably avenues you can take to make your dispute legally. And Jesus says, you know, whatever that is, that's not me. I'm not here to, to do that. And if you think about it, even if Jesus said, with Jesus, Son of God, all-knowing, if you just said, yep, the first brother, he's in the wrong, you know, would that change the, these people's hearts? Probably not. Um, so Jesus kind of knew better than to get into it. But he uses the occasion of someone bringing this up to get the people there thinking and get us thinking about this idea of earthly wealth and, and really about this idea of, of greed that Jesus is going to bring up here. Because then he said to them, this is Jesus, of course, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Again, he's not so much speaking to these couple of brothers, but he's speaking to everybody and he's speaking to us to watch out for greed. Now, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but you hear the word greed, and I'm almost thinking of a caricature of this, right? I'm thinking of like a cartoon person with dollar signs, you know, for, for pupils in their eyes, and they're just, you know, they're just possessed almost by a desire for more. And, or, you know, we think of people who are, you know, robbing a bank, right? Going to extreme measures uh, to get more money. And, and that's the other thing, too, that we focus, you know, when we think of greed, at least me, I'm thinking of money, people who want money. And that's certainly a possibility, right? And I think maybe sometimes, though, we think about it, and because it, it, it seems so out there, or maybe we think of extreme examples, uh, but it seems like, you know, greed is something that some people out there, some anonymous people out there, have a problem with. Uh, and maybe we're less likely to say, oh, greed is something that I might have a problem with or that I could be tempted toward. And the way Jesus brings it up is, is really interesting because he, he uses pretty strong words. This watch out, be on your guard it is strong language from, from Jesus because he's really bringing our attention to this. You know, look out. Um, this is something that you need to watch out for. And maybe because it isn't as obvious. Right? Maybe it's because it's something that we think, well, this is something other people struggle with, not so much me. But Jesus says, watch out. Right? These are the things that, that can sort of sneak up on you. Right? Because be on your guard against all kinds of greed, and that all kinds reminds us this isn't just about money. This is about uh, everything. And I was really fascinated, um, the original language that Jesus says this, the word for greed um, has the word, in the original language here, has the word for more in it which is one of the reasons I gave us the theme that I did today, this idea of looking for more. Uh, because this, this picture of greed that Jesus is talking about, again, is this desire for always looking for more. More something, more stuff, uh, more things, more, maybe it's just one more thing, and I'll, I'll finally feel better. You know, I'll finally feel satisfied with whatever it is. 
And that's something that could be a temptation for all of us. And uh, our first point that I want to remind us of, you know, this idea of looking for more leads to earthly problems, right? And, and again, I don't just mean looking for more in a good sense. Uh, again, that, that sinful always looking for one more thing leads to earthly problems. We, saw, we see it even in this tiny sliver of a picture in our text of these brothers who are now airing their dirty laundry, you know, in front of thousands of people and Jesus here about their little um, inheritance dispute. But we think, you know, is this just something that happens in, in stories from Bible times? Of course not. You know, we, maybe you can all think of, of things, uh, of people you know where, you know, an argument over stuff, whether it's an inheritance or, or whatever it is, has divided people, you know, and led to huge problems. And again, it's not just someone who, you know, for example, gambles away their entire paycheck, you know, and now has nothing to you know, pay uh, for their own food and, and lodging or anything like that. Yeah, those are, those are maybe extreme examples. But think how that pursuit of more can just lead to problems in our lives. And it can be to tell ourselves, well, I just want, you know, things to go better, and I want to have more, and I want my family to have more. And, but how the pursuit of that can actually deteriorate the relationships with those other people and, and give the opposite effect that it's supposed to have. Not to mention the fact that it's just kind of a miserable thing to always feel like, oh man, everything would be good if I just had more of this, whatever this is. You know, we're, it's one of those things that when you're actually content, um, it's actually a lot less stressful. Uh, it's a lot less, you know, you're not chasing it, you're just, you know, thankful for what you have. So this idea that, you know, this looking for more can lead to problems. And I like the way that Jesus words it uh, in our text here at the very end where he says, Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And it's interesting to think of Jesus saying this at the time he did, which from, you know, according to our perspective, we'd probably be shocked by the lack of stuff, right, of, of material possessions that they would have had back then. You know, uh, they would have almost seen, you know, just destitute, just scraping by on, on, with nothing compared to what, you know, even average or below average, whatever that means, people in this world tend to have, again, with, with our possessions. And again, that doesn't make our possessions evil, but they can cause problems. And really what Jesus is going to get into most isn't just the earthly problems they cause, which are, you know, which are something, which are significant, but there's things even more important than that, the problems that they can cause. And, and Jesus goes into that here with a parable. Um, and so, if I can get to it. There we go. Oh, that's not it. All right. So this is a parable. Again, uh, parables are, are these little stories Jesus would tell, uh, so we, which we could sometimes call an earthly story with a spiritual meaning or a heavenly meaning. You know, he's making a point for us spiritually by doing an earthly story. So we see that here. It says, the ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. It's okay. Um, he's talking about a farmer with, with maybe we would say a good problem to have if you're a farmer. Um, your crops are going so great, so you don't have enough places to put them. So again, with how Jesus has described it, nothing necessarily wrong here. Uh, going well for the farmer. He's deciding to, all right, I better put my grain somewhere. Um, I'm going to tear down my barns and build bigger ones. All on its own, not necessarily a bad thing. And we hear what the, the guy's thinking. Uh, and I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Now again, just on the, just on the surface, we might think, well, okay, well, at least he's not saying, I'm going to build bigger barns, and then next year I'm going to plant and double the fields. And I'm going to get, okay, at least he's, you know, it seems like he's thankful and content, you know, on the outside, we could say, okay, this, you know, is it really so bad to, to enjoy the, the fruit of his labor? Not necessarily, right? But Jesus is, to, is the one telling the story. And so he's the one who can tell us where this man's heart really was. And that's the issue. You know, not so much that the stuff he had was a problem, but because he was focusing on that stuff, he wasn't focusing on other things. And that's what we see in how God answers the man in the parable, 
But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? So the way, as Jesus is telling the story, he's saying, all right, this guy, sure, he had a successful farm uh, and he needed more space for his grain. All right, nothing wrong there. But what Jesus shows by this answer from God is that's all this person, that was this person's life. He paid attention to his stuff, his, his earthly possessions. Everything was about that. What everything wasn't about for him was his relationship with God. And so now when death strikes this man, as God tells him that's what's going to happen, he's left with nothing. He doesn't have that relationship with God. He doesn't have that, that eternal picture of the blessings from God and from our Savior. So that's a problem, right? Or to say it this way, looking for more leads to eternal problems, not just earthly problems. If the, the things that we're focus on, focusing on in this world have taken our focus off of our God and our Savior, that's a really big problem, right? That's a much bigger problem than, than earthly relationships because we're talking about eternity here. And yes, I realize that none of us would ever wake up and say, you know what, I think today I'm going to start igno- uh, you know, really focusing on my earthly possessions and really start ignoring God more. I just think it's a good move for me. You know, none of us are going to say that. Uh, and we're most likely not going to think that that's what's happening. But it's so easy for that to happen with us. We think of the, the spiritual blessings God gives to us and how he gives them to us, right? He gives them to us in not necessarily flashy ways, right? Through his word and sacrament. It's not flashy. Uh, and it's not always even telling us information we didn't know, right? He, he comes to us with the gospel message to build up our faith, uh, to, to keep our faith strong in him. And how easy it is to sort of think of you know, hearing and reading God's word as something that, you know what, if I have everything else done and everything else is going great and if I have time, I'll totally do that. You know, it's really easy to have it be, you know, if it works out, sure. Uh, if it doesn't work out, there's always plenty of time later, right? Or, or to think about how, again, sometimes we can think this way, whether we're here in church or watching online or not, but we can think, You know, sometimes it's hearing what God says and trying to grow in my faith. It's almost an obstacle that that keeps me from doing what I really want or that keeps me from doing more of really getting the most out of life. And again, with that sort of idea, God would just say, you know, you fool. If that's what you focus on outside of God's blessings to you, that's, that's that's all God could say to us. If it's about, if if it finally has the consequence to us of we don't have a faith anymore in our Savior and we're lost forever, you know, would that be worth it? Of course not. And, and so we, we hear Jesus end our text here, and it's really, uh, really as a warning um, because he says these words, this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich toward God. So really, I mean, again, you just read the story as it's written, it's say, that's kind of a bummer, right? This is, Jesus says, all right, uh, here's this guy who was rich. Guess what? He died and lost it all, and he lost eternity because he was just focused on his earthly stuff. And Jesus says, this is how it will be, right? But even here, even in this warning, there's a glimpse of God's grace to us. And that's in those last words that, you know, this is how it will be for people who aren't rich toward God. And, and there's a part of us that says, well, how can I be that, right? How, how can that be me, uh, that I can be rich toward God, and that's the good news for us. Because us being rich toward God isn't, isn't about us making sure that we've done something, right? It's about letting God bless us spiritually. It's about God coming to us, again, with his word and sacrament and filling us up and building us up in our faith. Or, or to put it this way, looking for more, the true more that we need is only found in God. The blessings are of our faith, because what do we see there? We see Jesus' forgiveness. We see his forgiveness even for the times that we've overlooked his word for something that seemed more important from this world. For the times that we've let uh, all kinds of greed take over for us. In Jesus, those times are forgiven. Jesus has paid that debt. You know, more debt that we can you know, we could ever accumulate enough to pay it off in this world? Not even close. 
Only Jesus' perfection could ever pay it off, and he's given it to us. It's ours by faith. Our, that sin is washed away. And also, in that very word, God gives us you know, his Holy Spirit and his contentment to rejoice in the blessings he gives us, to not have to be searching for more in this world and, and to fill up some hole in our heart because we realize only God can fill up any holes in our hearts. Anything that we're longing for, God is the one who provides it. He's going to provide it for all eternity through Jesus. Right? Is that easy for us with our sinful nature and you know, the material possessions uh, flashy uh, as they are all around us? No. And there are times where, again, sinfully speaking, we're going to be tempted to be looking for more. But the reminder for us today is that the more of this world, it can disappear. Right? It can be burned up in a fire. It can be just part of an estate sale, you know, um, down the line. But God's blessings, those are things that last. Those are things that don't get taken away. The forgiveness, life, and salvation that are yours and mine through Jesus, they're ours forever. To enjoy for all eternity in the heaven that Jesus bought and paid for and has given to us. Amen. I invite you then to please stand. We confess our faith uh, in the triune God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I invite you to speak these words along with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue with our prayer of the church, um, and we're going to include in our prayer today a, a prayer for Renee Costner Osberg, a member here at Good Shepherd, uh, pr praying for her, her healing and recovery uh, as she just underwent uh, neck surgery earlier this week. So we'll keep her in our prayers. Uh, but we'll speak this uh, responsive prayer together. We pray. Loving God and Lord, you created the universe that surrounds us and the globe on which we live. You control all things through your Son, who sits at your right hand in glory. Give your word power as it works in our hearts and minds. Clear away our confusion and demolish our doubts. Send your Spirit to strengthen both our confidence in your promises and our desire to live according to your will. The signs of the times warn us that the end of time is near. Protect us from scoffers who sneer at your truth. Spare us and Christians around the world from all forms of hate and persecution. Instill in the hearts of our children a desire to follow you as they prepare for future days. Help them distinguish between what is passing and what is eternal, between instant thrills and lasting joy. Encourage more young people to prepare for service in the public ministry of the gospel. And hold in your care, Lord, those who are experiencing physical or emotional pain and all who are afflicted by disease or facing death. Lord, we especially uh, pray to you uh, for Renee Costner Osberg this morning. First of all, giving thanks that you were with her and that you helped her get through the surgery and you gave uh, skill and wisdom to the medical professionals taking care of her. But now, Lord, we ask you to, to continue to be with her. And we ask according to your will to give her complete healing and a speedy recovery after this surgery. Again, Lord, even as you bless her, we pray with, with physical healing and physical strength, 
uh, continue to bless her also with, with your spiritual healing and strength. Keep her eyes focused on you uh, and remind her that you are working these things uh, for her good, even as you've worked all things for our eternal good through your Son, our Savior. Lord, we also ask you to pour out your compassion on the grieving and to comfort the mourners who miss someone they loved. And hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Whether we pray together or alone, you have promised to hear and answer us. Give us patience to accept your blessings in whatever way you send them. In your love and wisdom, prepare us for the day when you will take us to be with you forever. All right, so we'll take just a moment. Uh, if you haven't done so, please fill out the Connect card that you find on each row, and those viewing us online can fill out the online Connect card also. Thanks. Please stand for a closing prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Uh, we'll continue then with our closing hymn. Uh, you may be seated for this hymn.
Once again, good morning and welcome to Good Shepherd. It's great to be with you here today uh, to praise our God together and receive his gifts to us in his word. Uh, a couple of announcements, and one is just to remember to actually look at, at the screens. Um, you would never just tune them out, of course, and just not look at them, or I probably would. So make sure you check those out uh, for anything that you missed. Uh, I did want to announce, I, I sent an email out, uh, but did want to announce that earlier this week I received a, a call to serve as associate pastor at at Salem Lutheran Church of Owasso, Michigan, uh, and I'm just sort of starting to get information on that. Uh, but please keep me in, in your prayers as I think about, you know, what, what gifts do I have to serve and, and where could those gifts best be used um, is really my goal um, in thinking of that. So keep me in your prayers and, and feel free to uh, bring any feedback to me that you wish. Um, I did want to just highlight, though, VBS, uh, which is coming up. Um, <clears throat> We're, we're hoping to, to move ahead with it, uh, but if there's any other people who are willing to help, that would really help us feel better about where we're at uh, to make sure we can pull it off and um, greet as many people as we can. So, so check that out. That's not this coming week, VBS, but it's the week after. Uh, but if you can help and you haven't signed up or, or talked to me or uh, Ginger Lemke, please do so um, so that we can count you in there. Uh, with that, God's blessings to you this week um, as you... Rejoice, yes, in all your earthly blessings. Uh, thank God for them. Uh, but even more so, rejo rejoice in the heavenly blessings you have in Jesus. Thanks. God's blessings. <laughs>